In this video tutorial, we're going to continue looking at numeric integration techniques, and this time we're going to focus on something called the Simpsons rule. Now the function that's displayed on the screen is the function y equals 1500 over x squared minus 120 over x cubed plus 3x to the 2.5. And what we're going to do is we're going to use the Simpsons rule to approximate the value of this integral between the limits of 2 and 10. And for the purpose of this explanation, we're going to assume that we have a step size of 2. So the first block is going to run from 2 to 4. The second block is going to run from 4 to 6, from 6 to 8, and then 8 to 10. So when we approximate the value of an integral using the Simpsons rule, we're going to have these blocks or these columns, the first one running between 2 and 4. And when we use the Simpsons rule, we will establish the value of y when x equals 2. We will establish the value of y when x equals 4. And then applying the Simpsons rule, we will fit a curve between those two points. Now the way the Simpsons rule does this is by looking at the gradient of the function at the two end points, and then establishing a curve between those two points. All we really need to be able to do at this stage is to apply Simpsons rule, rather than concentrating on the derivation of the equation. So I'll give you the equation in a moment, but our second column is going to run from 4 to 6. Using Simpson's rule, we'll fit a curve between those two points. And once again, that will create an area under the curve. So, so far we have two areas. Next, we'll produce our third column. So we'll establish our value of y when x equals 8. We already know our value of y when x equals 6. And a curve is used to connect those two points based on the gradient at the two ends of the curve. That generates our third area, and our final area, once again, a curve fits between the two points, and we generate our final area. Now, as you can probably appreciate, if we were to use smaller step sizes, such as a step size of one or step size of half, then each of those curve approximations would fit more tightly to the function. So what we're going to look at in this video is we're going to approximate the value of the integral between x equals 2 and 10, using a step size of 2, as is displayed on the screen, and then we're going to repeat that using a step size of 1 to compare the values that we get for the approximation of the integral. And then we're going to finish by integrating the function and working out the actual value of the integral. Okay, so in this view, first of all we have our function in the top left hand corner, y equals 1500 over x squared, minus 120 over x cubed, plus 3x to the 2.5. And directly underneath that, we have a table of x and y values where an x value of 2 yields a y value of 376.97 to two decimal places, and so on. And the way those values were generated, if we take x equals 5 as an example, we would go to our function in the top left hand corner and we would replace each of the x's with 5. So 1500 over 5 squared minus 120 over 5 cubed plus 3 times 5 to the power of 2.5 would equal 226.75. And in black there, we have Simpson's rule, which states that i equals h over 3 times y0 plus yn. Well, y0 is the y value at our lower limit, and yn is our y value at our upper limit. So that accounts for those two terms there. Next, we have plus 4y1 plus y3, well y1, y3, all the way up to yn minus 1, are our odd values of y, and that accounts for each of those terms there. And finally, we've got plus 2y2 plus y4, all the way to yn minus 2. Well, our upper limit is 10, therefore y to the n minus 2 would be the 566.26. Now what I've just explained there assumes that we're using a step size of 1. However, first of all, we're going to use a step size of 2. So our first column runs from 2 to 4. Our second column runs from 4 to 6. Our third column runs from 6 to 8. And our last column 
runs from 8 to 10. Therefore, we're only actually interested in the y values at 2, 4, 6, 8 and 10. So y0 and yn are going to remain the same. It's going to be the y value at our lower limit and the y value at our upper limit. Our odd values of y are going to be the y value when x equals 4 and the y value when x equals 8. The reason being we're only interested in the y values at x equals 2, 4, 6, 8 and 10. Therefore, when x equals 2, that's our y0 value. When x equals 4, that's our y1 value. When x equals 6, that's our y2 value. When x equals 8, that's our y3 value. And when x equals 10, that's our yn value. Our even values of y then, well our only even value of y this time is the value of y when x equals 6. Okay, so let's input these into the formula and see what we get as our approximation for the integral using the Simpson's rule with a step size of 2. So we've got i equals h over 3. Well, first of all, we're using a step size of 2, so 2 thirds, times y0 plus yn. Well, y0 is 3, 7, 6.97, and yn is 963.80. We've then got plus four lots of our odd y values, which is going to be y1 and y3. So we've got four lots of y1. Well, y1 is the value of y when x equals four. We're looking at this value here, y1, 187.88. Plus our other odd value of y is y3, which is the value of y when x equals 8. So we're looking at this value here, 566.26, plus 2 times our even values of y. Well, we've only got one even value of y, it's y2, and y2 is 305.66. Okay, and we're going to close our square bracket. Therefore, the approximation of the integral, when we run that through our calculators, is 3,312.43 to two decimal places. Okay, next we're going to repeat that with a step size of 1. Okay, so this time all of our data is valid. Our y0 value is when x equals 2. Our yn value is when x equals 10. Then we have y1, y2 y3, y4, y5, y6, and y7. And we can apply our formula. And because we're doing a step size of 1, our integral becomes 1 over 3 this time. y0 plus yn, well y0 is 376.97, and yn is 963.80. And to that, we're going to add four lots of all our odd y values. So our odds are y1, 208.99, y3, 226.75, y5, 419.19, plus y7, which is 747. Point six eight. Now to that we're going to add two lots of all of our even values of y. So y2, 187.88 plus y4, 305.66 plus y6, 566.26. Okay, now when we run that through our calculators, taking care to include all of our brackets in the correct places, we get an approximation of the integral equal to 3290.27. And if you recall, using a step size of 2 instead of a step size of 1, we got a value of the integral 
equal to 3312.43. Now what we need to assume is that the smaller step size gives us a more accurate approximation of the integral. But what we're going to do just to finish this tutorial is we're going to compare each of those values to the true value of the integral. So with a step size of 2, we had an i value equal to 3312.43. And with a step size of 1, we had a value of i equal to 3290.27. So they're not massively different, but there is a difference nonetheless. So what we're going to do next is we're going to find the integral of the original function between the limits of 2 and 10. And the original function was 1500 over x squared minus 120 over x cubed plus 3x to the 2.5 dx. So I'm just going to rewrite that. We've got the integral between 2 and 10 of 1500 x to the minus 2 minus 120 x to the minus 3 plus 3 x to the 2.5 dx and that's going to give us the definite integral well 1500 x to the minus 2 the first thing we need to do is raise the power by 1 so minus 2 plus 1 is minus 1. And then we need to divide the coefficient by the new power. Well, 1500 divided by minus 1 is minus 1500. Our second term is minus 120 x to the minus 3. Well, x to the minus 3, raising the power by 1, will give us x to the minus 2. And dividing the minus 120 by the minus 2 will give us plus 60. And finally, x to the 2.5, raising the power by 1, becomes x to the 3.5. And dividing the coefficient by the new power, we get 3 over 3.5. And we're integrating that between our limits of 2 and 10. So the first thing we need to do is we need to put 10 into that formula. And putting 10 into that formula gives 2561.5. One, two, and then we need to subtract from that the value of the square bracket when x equals 2. So when x equals 2, we get minus 725.30. Now because we have a minus and a minus, that becomes a plus. So what we're actually finding is 2561.12 plus 725.30, which equals 3286.42 to two decimal places. Now we can clearly see that our approximation using a step size of 1 is more accurate than our approximation using a step size of 2.